A little more than a decade ago, Brian Banks was a star linebacker at Polytech High School in Long Beach, California, a well-known football powerhouse that sent dozens of players to the National Football League. He was being recruited by the best college teams in the nation, dreaming of an NFL career of his own. But then, in the course of a single afternoon, his life changed forever. And eventually, the 17-year-old landed in Chino State Penitentiary for raping and kidnapping a female classmate. However, even though he pled no contest, we now know that Brian was innocent. It's a story that 60 Minutes has been following for close to a year. And as you're about to hear, almost nothing about Brian Banks' story, beginning, middle, or end, is what you'd expect. The story will continue in a moment. Last May, like every other team in the National Football League, the Seattle Seahawks held a spring mini training camp for players with hopes of making the roster in the fall. Go, quick, 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 on the time, let's go. Amid the many long shots, one player in the number 43 jersey stood out because Brian Banks had not played organized football in 10 years. To have my name on the back of this jersey, to be a part of this team for a day, is it's more than I could ever imagine. The last time Brian played football, he was in high school. And he was so good that as a sophomore, scouts from USC had spotted him at a camp. And soon the team's head coach, Pete Carroll, got in touch. I received a phone call from Coach Carroll uh, and, you know, we're, we're offering you a chance to come play for us. And I gave him a verbal agreement saying I'd love to. Everything seemed to be lining up for Brian. Until one day at school, he was hanging out with a girl he'd known for years. Her name was Juanetta Gibson. What happened next changed the course of Brian Banks' life forever. We made our way to this area and pretty much began making out. Um, you know, we kissed, we touched. But we never had sex. No argument. No. No argument. Uh, we actually ended on a good note where you know I was making jokes and and you know she smiled and everything just seemed normal. Everything seemed okay. But it wasn't. By the end of the day, Brian Banks was sitting in jail, charged with two counts of forcible rape and kidnapping one at a Gibson. He was kicked off the football team and expelled from school, with all hope of a scholarship and NFL career suddenly vanished. The only thing he could do was fight for his innocence. And the only person who was in his corner was his mother, Leomi Myers, who sold her house and car to pay for a lawyer. I consider it doing what a mother should do. Initially, Brian's prospects appeared to be looking up. DNA samples from the L.A. County Sheriff's Office came back negative, as he insisted they would. Unable to make a million-dollar bail, Brian waited for a trial for a year behind bars. As his day in court approached, Brian says that his lawyer feared that he wouldn't get a fair trial based on his age, size, and race. So she, an African-American herself, convinced Brian to plead no contest to a crime he insisted he didn't commit. His plea meant he'd avoid a possible 41 years in prison. But he was agreeing to a deal that included a sentence of anywhere from 18 months to five years. And Brian received the maximum. I remember leaving that courtroom and going back into a holding cell and just being angry at the world. In addition to the criminal prosecution of the case, Juanetta Gibson sued the school system for a lack of security, winning a $1.5 million settlement. In 2007, after five years at Chino State Prison, Brian finally got out of jail at age 22 after serving 85% of his sentence. But he was still required to wear an electronic monitoring bracelet and for the rest of his life register as a sex offender wherever he lived. Then last year came a turn he never could have expected. When one day, searching for work online, he got a friend request on his Facebook page. It was Juanetta Gibson the same woman who had accused him of raping her. I immediately just I froze. And um, I didn't accept the request. Instead, I sent a uh, message to her. And my message asked her, why would you, why would you friend request me? And um, she replied back that she was hoping that we could allow bygones to be bygones. 
she was really adamant about wanting to see me and wanting to hang out. It wasn't about wanting to help. It was more of wanting to reconnect. Hang out. Yeah. What you been up to? What are you doing tonight? What are you doing tomorrow? Let's hang out. Brian was in disbelief, but he also knew instantly what kind of opportunity this might be. And with the help of her friend's father, a private investigator, they set up a meeting with hidden cameras. You were surprised that she showed up? Very much surprised. My was a 23, 15 year old. With the cameras rolling, Brian asked her for help in getting exonerated. And here's how she responded. I mean, I will go through with helping you, but it's like at the same time, all that money they gave us, I mean, gave me, right. I don't want to have to pay it back all that, because that will right. take a long time. Though Juanetta admitted to not wanting to give back the money she won in her civil lawsuit against the school, she was willing to meet a second time. And it was then that Brian and the investigator worked to get the ultimate admission on tape. He's accused of rape. He's accused of kidnapping. Yeah. And I need to just hear it from you that those things, and I'll put it all on a piece of paper, and then I'll meet up with you, and we can go from there. So you want me to stay down? Yeah, and so I can... Did he break you? No, he didn't. Did he kidnap you? No. Okay. So... Got it. It's the truth is out. The truth is out. Um, <laughs> I honestly wanted to just stand up and walk out of there. There was nothing else to talk about. Brian Banks, case number NA054901. And with the help of the California Innocence Project, Brian took the tape confession to the district attorney's office, who viewed the new evidence, met with Juanetta Gibson, and then agreed to recommend to the judge that Brian be exonerated. The people's motion to dismiss this case pursuant to Section 1385. Anything else? Nothing. At that moment, a 10 year nightmare was over for both Brian and his mother. I wanted to scream and shout for joy. I just slouched in my chair and cried. I was just so happy, so happy. He was free because he wasn't free before. You're not free when you have an ankle bracelet on your ankle, it's like your shackle. You're not free when you can't go to a park or you can't go to your niece's birthday party because of other kids are around. You're not free. Just to see him in the courtroom and the way he responded, Mm. It was the best news I've ever had. The best news that I've that I've ever had. And I'm just so thankful to God that he's free. Outside the courtroom, Brian and his defense team celebrated. And Deputy District Attorney Daniel Ferreira explained the court's decision. We believed the recantations of the witness. We do not believe Mr. Banks did the crime that, that he pled guilty to, and therefore justice has been served. Banks went straight home that night, where, as this cell phone video shows, he wasted no time in getting rid of the device that he had been wearing for five straight years. We are free. Out. Yes. Brian Banks' original defense attorney, Elizabeth Harris, declined to talk to 60 Minutes, as did Juanetta Gibson, who has not returned the money she won in her lawsuit. For its part, the school district has not reached out to get it back. You still have no hopes or desires that she be gone after aggressively? No, none whatsoever. Why not? Um, my main focus has just been on me. And from day one, that focus meant football, even if now playing in the NFL was more of a long shot than ever. Go! But the next turn his story took was another dose of the improbable. A few days after I was exonerated, I got a uh, phone call from a 213 number, and I'm, I, I'm like, hello? And uh, the voice on the other end goes, yeah, I'm looking for a linebacker. You know where I can find one? I said, yeah, yeah, you got the right number. Who is this? He said, it's Coach Carroll. <laughs> the same Coach Carroll who'd been interested in Banks 10 years earlier as head coach at USC. Now, Pete Carroll was coaching the Seattle Seahawks, and he had a crazy idea. Extend an invitation to Brian, who hadn't played football since his junior year of high school, to try out for his NFL team. Well, I told him how, uh, you know, what a 
shot in the dark this was for him. You know, it was such a long mm -hmm. shot. Uh, you know, the, our guys have prepared their whole lives and never have missed a beat, and he missed 10 years. It's probably changed since the last helmet that you wore. But Carroll felt Banks deserved a chance, which is how, just 14 days after leaving the California courtroom, he found himself in Seattle this past June, alongside dozens of other Seahawk hopefuls under the watchful eye of Pete Carroll and his staff. Appreciate it, Coach. Okay, buddy. Thank you, very much. Take care, buddy. Right. Which included former NFL All-Pro Ken Norton, Jr. The hurdles weren't just physical. So you cheated the offset back really good. There was also the matter of making up for lost time in the film room. It's all about the eyes. Once a running back sees you running... Seattle was one of six NFL teams that gave Banks a tryout. But ultimately, he didn't make it onto any NFL rosters. I was hoping, I was really hopeful that something good was going to happen. But in the workout, you could see that he just couldn't, he couldn't make up the ground. And, uh, and th those 10 years, I don't know who could have. He may not have been able to get past an NFL practice field, but that wasn't the end of Brian Banks' football season. Because there was another pro team interested in giving him a shot. The Las Vegas Locos, part of the fledgling United Football League. And that's how in September, there was Brian Banks on the Locos' opening kickoff of the season. I ran down the field and got blindsided. And I got up and I was just like, yeah, <laughs> I'm playing football. <laughs> the United Football League ended up folding in October. And Brian Banks still hasn't gotten a paycheck. But that didn't put too much of a damper on the experience of being a professional football player. Can you sign my shirt, please? Thank you. Today, at 27, Brian Banks hasn't given up on his hope to play someday in the National Football League. And at this moment, Banks is in negotiations with several NFL teams for this upcoming season. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't define me. If it does happen, it doesn't define me. Regardless of how things end, I'm good. I've already won.